I'm Big Will Levinson. And I'm Titus Klink. And it is time to talk sports, folks. The championship game is officially set as our semifinal has just gone final moments ago behind us. We'll tell you how, how it finished, but first, let's take a look at how it started with those highlights. The only game of the day. Semifinal matchup between Georgia Highlands and Blinn. The GHC Chargers looking to replicate what they did Wednesday when they walked off the Blinn Buccaneers. And of course, not an empty seat. It's a Blasio for this marquee matchup. And the action did not waste time. Leadoff hitter for Blinn, Tanner Reeves. It's a deep in a center. Chargers center fielder Ryan Weidman can't make the leaping grab. And so Reeves has time to run. And Reeves runs, running all the way to third. Loses his cap on the slide, but it's a trip to start for Blinn. Now it's Caden Ferraro. What a great tournament he's had who gets it to drop in a right. Reeves scores with ease. Blinn Bucks are on the board first. It's 1-0. Second inning, how about some fielding? Grayson Godby, the grab, the throw, the tag, double play for Georgia Highlands and a great play made by Godby to end the second. It's still 1-0. Bottom second and Godby will, of course, seeking it too. He rockets it to left center and zoom and around third. And coming on home is Barrett Eldridge. We are knotted up at one as Godby shows off the moves. Next batter, Ali Banks hits it off Brennan Sweeney's knee. Ouch. But works for the Chargers as Wednesday's hero Ryan Martin scores. And now Godby is pumped up as he comes home. Georgia Highlands now up 3-1. to one. And just look at Ali Banks. You think this game means something to these guys? Look at that. Still in the second. The hot dog is loaded. And that's what you want to do when the bases are full. Will confidence hit. So it's a free run for Georgia Highlands. They lead it now 4-1, to one, but you know the Bucs aren't going anywhere. They're here for a reason, and part of the reason is this team's power. Cade Climey sends it flying in a center and gone. What a huge play for the Bucs. A two-run shot makes it 4-3. to three. Georgia Highlands, and yesterday against Flodar, just after we saw Climey go yard, we saw the same thing from this man. Back-to-back -back days, these two go back-to-back. -back. Homers, Caden Ferraro gets all of this one. I think that went over the scoreboard just like that. The Bucks have battled back. We're all tied at four. Now Cody Fury, to Fury rather, with a great piece in the right. Beautiful base hit for Blinn is Reeves, who double to get on base, gives the Bucks the lead. It's five to four still in the third, and Blinn would just keep pouring it on in this third inning. A great hit here. Fair and left by Tony Vernos as the Buccaneers would lead Georgia Highlands 9-5 after three innings. And yes, folks, that third inning by the Blinn Buccaneers, it was the difference. Eight runs in that third, Titus, and Blinn, they have gotten the job done. They get the win over Georgia Highlands 15-8, 15-10 rather, is the final from Suplicio Field, Titus. Yeah, well-deserved win by the Buccaneers. When I spoke with a pitcher, starting pitcher Jake Colcourse, early into this tournament, he said that they were not happy that they finished last year in fourth place and that they were determined to come out here on top and win this whole thing. They are one game away away from doing that one game away from a national championship and you know they came so close to having it end yesterday in that game against Florence Darlington so I think for them to be able to find a way to scratch and claw fend off the comeback of the stingers and get that win it gave them confidence and they showed it today because you know we expected this game to be a close one like Wednesday but really Blinn was the better team throughout this one yeah they're a better team and I'd say the more experienced team I got to give credit to Georgia Highlands Chargers this is their first appearance in the right. World Series but it came down to experience and the Bucks had that with the pitching and the uh, crucial hitting by Kay Klami and Kay Ferraro these guys are made for this moment and they showed it they are only one of three teams that were in this field of 10 teams to be in the tournament last year. They went the furthest. They went all the way to the semifinal last year, but this year they make it all the way to the championship where they're just one one away from taking it home. And tomorrow it sets up the championship. The Blinn Buccaneers and the Northwest Florida State Raiders. It's going to be a dog fight, man. I can already imagine what this game, that game tomorrow is going to be like. Two teams trying to win it all. You got Northwest Florida, uh, the Raiders. You got the Buccaneers. It's going to be a showdown, man. I can't wait to uh, have that game on tonight, I mean, tomorrow night. Georgia Highlands was fantastic in this tournament, and we it, they were so much fun to watch. They gave us the moment of the tournament with that game on Wednesday night, but it really does feel like in the end we've gotten our two best teams. We've gotten the teams that have, have found ways to win despite things that may have happened throughout the game, and it's, it's going to be, as you said, a matchup for the ages. The Alpine Bank Junior College World Series Championship 
on the line tomorrow night. Northwest Florida State and Blinn, 7 p.m. first pitch. We'll have all the coverage coming for you tomorrow night on KREX 5. But here from Simplesio Field, he, Titus Cleveland, and I'm Big Will Levinson.